Thank you so much. Thank you. I am John Campbell, and I am on a mission to cut the trash in half in America, and I'm here to give you the good news that we can do that, and we can do it right now. And as I travel around the country and talk with people about this objective, one of the things that I often uh, hear from them is a question, which is, do we really need to, to do this? Do we, really need, do we really have a problem here that we need to address? Because when I take my trash to the curb, I hear, it goes away, and I thankfully never see it again, right? It's a very bad day when you put your trash at the curb and then somehow you see it again. Uh, <laughs> So it's a valid question. It's really, it truly is a valid question. In fact, just a few weeks ago in the New York Times, John Tierney published quite a controversial article about waste in which he said, do you know, we've been trying to get Americans to recycle for 30 years. And they just simply don't like the idea. It's very costly. We can't get them to go along with the program. And so we ought to give up. He's done an economic analysis, and he said, uh, people have been burying and burning garbage right outside the city gates for thousands of years. I've done this analysis, and that's what we ought to do, is just give up. And I would say to John Tierney that I respectfully disagree. It's a particularly bad time to give up on the idea of waste reduction because, quite simply, America is drowning in its own waste at this point, quite literally. We generate 857 pounds of trash for every man, woman, and child in the United States every single year in our homes, within the four walls of our homes. When we go out, as we do, we go to restaurants, we go to work, we go to school, and we go to TEDx uh, conferences, Collectively, we generate 520 billion pounds of the stuff, which is hard for the mind to fathom, 520 billion pounds. But notice the trend line. It's, it's headed in the wrong direction here. It's, it's increasing quite rapidly over the last 30 years that we've been focused on recycling and waste reduction. So to help you to imagine what 520 billion pounds of trash looks like, We've done a little calculation. We found that if you laid it out, it would cover the entire state of Delaware about a foot deep every single year. And we're generating more every single year. And it's costing us a great deal of money, $500 billion, to move our waste around in the United States. $500 billion to pick it up and to process it I'm learning a lot about the garbage industry, including a different language. In garbage speak, 500 billion is not 500 large. It's 500 very, 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 very large, as they say in garbage speak. We also have environmental impacts that are substantial. We have, at this point, 200,000 garbage trucks, vehicles moving our trash around. The average garbage truck gets three miles per gallon. We're driving millions of miles on our roadways to move our trash to about 2,000 landfills and incinerators spread around the country. And when we do that, we are depositing it in a landfill that's going to create toxic leachate that at some point will threaten the water supply. If we're burning it, we're creating extraordinarily harmful emissions that are going to come back to us one way or another. No matter uh, how you slice it, we are every year the third leading producer of methane gas, which is very harmful in terms of climate impact, and uh, 275 million metric tons of carbon, which uh, at this point equates to about taking one in five cars off the road. Those are all of the environmental impacts that we don't think about when we take the trash to the curb and it's magically made to go away, but they are very much there with us every single day. So again, it's not just that we are spending $500 billion and a lot of time and energy trying to solve this problem. We're spending money 
at an increasing rate, 2.4 times the consumer price index or the bundle of goods and services, 2.4 times what we spend on everything else. So what's the problem here? We have spending, we have negative outcomes. Ladies and gentlemen, where, where I live and sitting across from mayors and people that run the Department of Public Works, what I hear is that for the last 10 years in my city, the recycling rate has stagnated. We can't get people to care. They hear John Tierney's words and say, I get what he's saying. We've tried to get people to care, but they don't. And so guess what? We've stopped investing. Cities all over the United States have stopped investing to try to get people to waste less and recycle more. In some cases, they are giving up completely. They are discontinuing their curbside recycling program because it doesn't make any sense given the paltry volume of material that's in the bin. It doesn't make sense. You have to get people to, to participate. You have to get people to get with the program. That's where we are. And it is pretty discouraging after 30 years. But at the same time, we have some cities that are having a different outcome, a very different experience, almost like they're on a different planet. And we'll call these the outlier cities. These are the cities that are doing what I suggested we could do in the entire country right now. They are cutting their trash in half. Completely, completely different set of outcomes. What have they done to achieve that endpoint? It's not what you would think. You may be thinking, well, they must have done this or that or something that I'm familiar with. Some of the familiar strategies are to have mandatory recycling, where we go into your trash and see if Mrs. Jones put a bottle in there that she shouldn't have. They, they're not doing that. Or perhaps we should give people a fancier container, or pick it up more frequently, or do more education, or do uh, ban plastic bags. None of these things are, are, are by themselves bad ideas, but they represent the same thinking that has been in place and have resulted in the outcomes that I just described. They are not sufficient to change the system. What works for the outlier cities is to engage people, exclamation point. If you don't have in your residence, if you don't have a community that cares, you will not have a successful waste reduction program. How do you do that? The outlier cities have borrowed a page out of the playbook from other utilities. It's very, very simple. So we all have a water bill or an electric bill or a gas bill. And utilities, uh, while not perfect in terms of incenting uh, consumers to conserve, have a model that says, if you choose to engage in wasteful behavior, you will pay more. It is your choice to engage in that behavior, but you will pay more. And so the outlier cities have said, we need to borrow this strategy to leverage behavioral economics in the solid waste system. We need to do that with trash. Because with trash, everyone in the United States, except for the outlier cities, has a model where you pay a flat fee, let's say $25 a month or $20 a month, or it's buried in the tax bill. That is the best practice around utility pricing for trash that's, that predominates. That is how it's done. It doesn't matter how much or how little waste you generate, everyone pays the same amount. It's, it's quite a, a bad system when you think about it. So how have the outlier cities found it a better way? Gosh, this sounds complicated. We're going to have to start metering the trash. I don't know how that would work. So. You know, it sounds like it might take 10 or 15 years. I know it did to put in all the water meters when we did that, right? Well, the outlier city said, let's just figure this out. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut this fixed fee because that doesn't change anyone's behavior. That's like having a flat rate water bill. So maybe we'll have a smaller fee that represents our cost to run the truck by your house and have the availability 
of trash collection services. So if we had a $25 fixed fee before, now it'll be 10. Just what it costs to run the truck by your house. And then we need the equivalent of a per gallon fee that you have in water. So how do we do that with trash? Well, oh my gosh, it's so simple. It's just amazing. In the outlier cities, in the best cities, you pay by the bag. If you leave a small bag at the curb, a kitchen size bag, it might cost you a dollar. If you leave a large bag, it might cost you two dollars. It depends on the actual cost in the city to pick up a 30 gallon bag of trash at your curb, put it in the truck and bring it to the landfill. In the best cities, it's no more and no less. And that means the message to the resident is, this is extraordinarily fair. I'm just charging you what it costs me. But I'm introducing a pricing signal. Well, gosh, how does all that work? That sounds complicated. It, it's, it's so simple. The bags are imprinted with the city seal. They get put onto the supermarket shelf. The resident goes to the supermarket and buys a prepaid disposal bag. And then the trash collector knows you've paid to dispose of your bag of trash. It's so simple. Now, what happens when we do that because the recycling is always free. And of course, composting things in the backyard is always free. And taking donations to a charitable organization is free. So I have now engaged people because I have everyone in the city now focused on the problem. It's not just people in City Hall saying, how am I going to convince Ann and, and Harvey to get interested in this recycling? We've done it. We have effectively, very quickly, some cities do this in 90 days when they're really motivated, okay? They have metered the trash. They have done one additional thing. These are cities, by and large, that have had recycling, had education, tried everything, <coughs> flatlined on their recycling rate, almost given up, made this change, and I'm going to tell you what's happened. I'm going to tell you the story of Worcester, Massachusetts, which is the granddaddy of these programs, implemented the program 22 years ago, and from the year before they implemented the program to the year after, they reduced their waste 55%. Unheard of. 55%. Over the lifespan of the program, the savings that they can record and document are about $95 million. I believe it's much more than that. But what's really amazing about Worcester is this is a town without a lot of resources, they don't have fancy trucks. They don't have big containers. They don't have any money to invest in, in school recycling programs. This is one of the greenest cities in the United States. They generate 319 pounds of garbage per person compared to the national average of 857 pounds per person per year. They generate less than half as much as Boston, their very wealthy neighbor, right, right across from, from Worcester half as much every year. One change. They've made their residents partners and they've made people aware that their, uh, that their behavior can and will impact the system. So congratulations to Worcester. They did it. They cut their trash in half and then some. And people followed Worcester's lead. So now, over the last 22 years, 35% of the cities and towns in Massachusetts have said, I want what they to do what they did. And they've done it successfully. And it's spread to Maine, where 30% of the population's done it. And New Hampshire, where 26%'s done it. And people have picked it up in Georgia, throughout the Midwest. Okay, it's spreading like seeds. It's, the idea is spreading. And it's working. In fact, we've tracked all of the cities that have done this year before, year after. No nonsense. Pounds per capita going to the landfill. The vast majority of them already had recycling programs in place, one change, 44% reduction on average. Greenest cities in the United States, best cities in the United States, outlier cities follow this model. So why doesn't everyone do it? Why doesn't everyone do it? It's simple. It's what, why doesn't everyone meter water? Well, most people do. Why hasn't everyone done this? The, the reason is that change can be hard. Change can be hard. We have a situation where people have become accustomed to their God-given right to throw away as much as they want to because they think it's free. They've, and they will defend that right. 
in public meetings, and they can be extraordinarily vocal. So if you are an elected official and people come to a town meeting and they are upset that you want to uh, introduce this model, which will result in everyone paying less, and, and there's no question, an extraordinary change in terms of environmental impact, but it's going to take a change and that's going to take courage. It takes courage on the part of people who are willing to say, we need to challenge the status quo. We need to change our model. I know we've been telling you that we're very good recyclers here. I get this a lot. You know, we don't want to rock the boat here because we, we're used to talking about all the good stuff that we do. This would admit saying that we can do much better than we've been doing. So for all those reasons, it takes courage. There's no capital required here. There's no 15-year plan. Courage and leadership. Those are the two things it takes to cut your tr the trash in half in any city or town in the United States that doesn't have this model. That's pretty extraordinary to think that uh, you can, in your hometown, bring a change that can take that money that's going to the landfill and invest it in education, and invest it in economic development, and infrastructure, and in the future, or in lowering taxes. Wouldn't we rather lower taxes and, uh, and, and have the benefits of that rather than shipping off 10 or 12% of the budget to the landfill? It's, it's encouraging to see people uh, that are leaders pick up the mantle of leadership and, and make this change happen. And I hope that we've shared an idea here today with you for your hometown. If we have, if I have, why not share this talk? Send it to your mayor, or send it to your city council. Send it to your favorite environmental group, and tell them, we'd like to explore this change. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a mission to cut the trash in half in the United States, and I hope that you will join me, and we ought to do this right now. Thank you.